look at it, put it on the, at the corner. Tell them they should put it at the corner. Joshua 1 verse 8, let's look at what the book of Joshua 1 verse 8 says. The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good sources. Are you with me? Let us read again. Let's, we can read it together. Read it together, verse 8. The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Take note of mouth. Mouth. The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good, you know the reason why they call it good success, because there are many sources. You know the Bible says, the, 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 the sources I give, not as the world gives it. Take note of that, because you say, they will say, which one is good sources? Sources, you say, no, sources is not sources. Go source the mention there. Take note of the word go source. Bible say the sources I give, not as the world gives. Um, source, have money, great day. Take note. We talk of go sources. What the Bible is talking about there? What 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 does he have to do with there? Uh, this your uh, the name you are giving it another name, but I'm saying as it go, you got it uh, uh, hit bracelets. Well, I look at it as say, wow, many say this is what God showed them. Okay, we are coming out. Okay, yes, you say faith builder, faith bracelets, faith this, this. Okay, we are not say it's it's equal to no. It's only as helping you to meditate in the world. So what is all about? What the Bible is saying, Joshua 1 verse 8, we have read it. The plan for sorcery that God gives to us. Tell your neighbor, the plan for sorcery that God gives to me. So when you begin to refer to Joshua, no, it's you, it's you, it's you. The name, where Joshua name is appear inside your name. God is talking to you. The plan for sources that God gives to me. Why am I worried? Why am I I'm grumbling? Why am I complaining? I say I want to succeed in life. And I'm, I keep running at a scatter. I don't know the way how to get there. But here is the way. The plan for sources that God gives to me. Tell your neighbor. I can hear you. Okay, this is the plan for success. In that book of John 1 verse 8, what does it say? One, the plan for success, one. What does it say? Eh? Keep the word in your mouth. One. Take your pen. Keep the word in your mouth. Which way? Word of God. Word of God. Keep the way in your wall, in your mouth. Tell your neighbor. I can hear you. I can hear you. If the word dominates your mouth, it will surely dominate in your heart. Not this kind of, you flesh, you idiot, you this, you that. Still don't leave my side. No. Keep the word in your mouth. If the word dominates your mouth, it will surely dominate your heart. And where are we going? We are going to the heart. 
This is sitting room, mouth, bedroom, heart. If you come to my house, you knock on the door, pop, 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 pop. they open the door for you. You only enter my city room. Since I'm not a criminal, since you are not a criminal, you will not enter my city room. I enter my room unless you're a thief. No matter how close the relationship or friend, no matter how close your friend, you you are close to a person. When a person knock your door, go, go. oh, how are you? Who is on the line? Who is there? Oh, I'm so, 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 Mr. Johnson. Oh, come in. You enter city room. Even if you enter city room and you could not see anybody in the city room, you have to wait there. That does not permit you to ent- begin to knock the door, bedroom. That is criminal. City room is mouth. Bedroom is heart. For you to sleep in the city room means you something is wrong. Whether you are forgotten yourself, or you came you ent- you came home late, or you have trouble with your partner, your wife, or your husband. When there is trouble between husband and wife, one will sleep in the city room, one will sleep in the bedroom. <laughs> if I'm talking, let me see your hands. <laughs> Yes. So for you to sleep and forget yourself in the city room, it means maybe somebody you own debt. Or you are expecting something from someone. After you have spent so much time waiting to collect it, the person says, No, I'm sorry. I have not be able to give you. I'm as I'm here now, I don't know when I will give it. By the time you are coming from the journey, you begin to look for any food, any food at all. No matter the food your wife cook for at home, you eat, you drink minerals, you just be going up and down anything. Even the food you don't use to eat, you eat it. By the time you now get to the room, to the house, at last, you will not enter the bedroom. You will sleep in the city room there. So now what you are saying, city room is mouth, bedroom is heart. So, if the word dominating your mouth, it will surely dominate your world. It will enter your room. It will just enter your room. Now we are saying the number one, now that uh, keep the word in your mouth. How will you keep the word in your mouth? Number two, one side. Number two. Meditate day and night in that word. Number two, please at the table, follow me. Meditate day and night in that word, that in, 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 in the word of God. How do you meditate? What you have read, what you have learned, Today, since morning, you have seen so much. People coming out to testify the mightiness of God. This is what you need to meditate about today. Ah, this is what happened. This is what TV Joshua is saying. All what I'm saying now, you have to meditate over it. You have to jot it and begin to meditate over it. Meditate over it. Meditation is a visit to who? To God. And meditation brings revelation. A meditation is a visit in God's way, it's a visit to God. You want to visit God, just begin to meditate in the Word. So, and meditation brings revelation. So you have to begin to meditate now, meditate now. Look at the use of, the use of this. That is it to help you. When you are sitting down looking at me, look at you, you are sitting down looking at me, it should be in your hand. Right in your hand and begin to meditate. What, what are you going to say now as you are sitting down watching me? If you have it with you, that is, take more of me, Holy Spirit, and give me more of you. Give me more of your holiness. Give me more of your faithfulness. And give me more of humility. 
take more of me and give me more of you, O oh Holy Spirit. That is what you begin to meditate about. As you are sitting down, it will be with you and you will be listening to me at the same time. Something is with you, leading you to meditate. Leading you to meditation. It will connect. Look, let me tell you. If heart and mouth get together, both, if heart and mouth, both, both, take note, in one accord with God's will, you begin to, to tap. Tap what? Blessing. If heart and mouth, both, in accord with God's will. Take note of that, write it down. If heart, if heart and mouth, both in accord with God's will, you begin to tap the blessing of God. If heart and mouth, both in one accord with God's will, you begin to tap Blessing. What is blessing? That what is happened to you, your heart and your mouth are not in accord. You speak the word, but your heart is not in accord with the mouth. Are you are you with me? And not in accord with the mouth. And if your heart is, is not in accord with the mouth, the way you are speaking cannot influence you, cannot influence your conduct and your behaviors. That is, the way you are speaking cannot change you. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. If what I'm saying now is my mouth that is speaking, but in my heart is different from what I'm saying now. That cannot change me. Hear me. That cannot hear me. That the way cannot hear me. If in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, let there be. Let there be full. In Jesus' name, I'm sick. Blessing, healing. That cannot happen. If what is in my heart is different from what I'm saying. Are you with me? Because mouth is a reviler. A reviler of what? The belief in your heart. Mouth is a reviler of the belief in your heart. You know what I mean by reviler? That is R E V A R E V E A L E R. Reviler of the belief in your heart. So, if mouth is the one bring what is in my heart, okay. Now, take it in this way. I, I want to say, in the name of Jesus, be he. In the name of Jesus, be he. What happened now? Is the man here? If the man is not here, it's me. The faith, the Bible says faith is of man's heart. Are you with me? It means what I'm saying is not according to the word, according to the truth of God's word. If what I'm saying now be he in Jesus' name, what happened? No healing. It means what I'm saying is not according to the truth of God's will. If what we are saying is not according to the truth of God's will, your will will be idle, meaningless, and awful time destructive. What do I mean by destructive? If what I'm saying is not according to the truth of God's will, awful time my will will become Destructive. Destructive means the demon that are around that hear me call it the name Jesus. When they hear the name Jesus, they always alert. Eh, eh, this man is calling the name. Eh, eh, eh. They want to see what's happened. If nothing happened, they will consume me. 
This is what happened to seven sons of Sceva. If what you are saying is not according to the truth of God's word, you're aware what you are saying will be idle, meaningless, and often destructive. Now, this will help you if the way dominates your heart, it will truly influence your conduct and your behaviors. And how can the world dominate in our heart? By meditation. By what? Like you are here now. It's difficult for you to meditate in the world. Because many of us are still a baby Christian. Unless we see something on the outside that will influence us to meditate. For, to meditate. If there's nothing on the outside to, to influence you to do so, you you will not. If you are not here now and you're in the in the party, you forget about anything called meditation. What you are saying. You say this man is dancing, my God. Oh, the man is dancing. Look at him. Oh, oh my God. These are the things that will influence you. You forget about that meditation we are talking about. So whether you are in the church or anywhere, this one will influence you on the outside. You cannot drop it. It's not possible. You wear it, and uh, when you are you're with yourself, you remove it, and you start with it on the outside. It will influence you on the outside to meditate. Are you, are you with me? So, take note of what I'm saying. Now, number three. We have talked about meditation, meditate day and night in that way. That is the word of God. Number three. Do what the world say. Do what the world say. Do what the world say. How can you do what the world say? When the world is not dominating your heart, you cannot do the world, what the world say. It's not possible for anyone to do what the world say. And the world has not dominated your heart. It is when it dominates your heart that it can inflame your conduct and your behaviors. Can you see why it's difficult for you to do what the world say? You hear the this is the this is the but you just hear it, you preach it, you read it. It's difficult because it has not dominated your heart. It is when it dominates your heart, it, ha- it, 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 it arrests your life. And you become an integral part. It becomes an integral part. Do what the world say. Yes. Do what the world say. You hear it. You hear it, but you cannot do what the world say because the world has not dominated your heart. So if the way dominating your heart, it will surely influence your conduct and your behaviors. Because Faith is of man's heart. People were asking, what is faith? Faith, faith, faith. Get, people get confused. Put it in this way. Faith is a lifestyle of trusting in God. Tell your neighbor, faith, faith. is a lifestyle of trusting in God. I can hear you. Again, simple. Not ordering God, ordering God around. I'm sick. Hear me. 
I'm poor. Bless me. Today, you say, heal me. God heal you. Tomorrow again, you say, my stomach, oh, God, heal me. You keep ordering God up and down. No. It's, it's not an issue of ordering God around. A lifestyle of trusting in God. Do what the world say. You cannot, and we cannot do what the world say until the world dominating our world. Our world. Our hearts. And how can the world dominating our heart? How can I meditate day and night, not just reading, but meditate day and night. You have to cultivate this habit. When you know that the word of God is the most effective instrument of change. You have, uh, this is the only thing that can change me, and you want to change. Just like a doctor will tell you that, uh, hey, don't take sugar again. If you take sugar, you can't spend two, two weeks again. Nothing sugar, anything sugar. And you obey immediately. If you can obey the doctor, why not obey? the almighty God whom you will spend the rest of your life with no matter how many years you spend here it's a ma here is a market if you go to market you go, you buy you can't sleep in the market even if you sleep in the market the people that care for the market will say please oh God, go out we want to clean the market eh? so here is market over there is home where you spend the rest. So if the doctor say, hey, look, what I'm saying now, you can't spend five, di five days more. Go and do your will. The next thing you ask doctor is, what can I do? That is the question. And doctor say, can you do it? Yes. Don't eat food. You have a special water you'll be taking. You take this drip. Take this drip only. You say, eh? If I take drip, I will not die. Yes, you will not die. You say, doctor, I'm ready to take drip. And stop smoking. Yeah, smoke it. I will not. I don't want to die. I'm ready to do anything you ask me to do. If we can say that to doctor, and we ready to obey doctor, what of God that doctor himself rely on? <laughs> eh? What of doctor himself rely on God after talking to you? Himself will go on his knee and say, My God, thank you for 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 for, 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 for advising me when I'm doing all this. Many of us are here today and under the instruction of doctor, we have stopped many things. Okay, ask yourself how many things many things you have stopped in the past. Mere doctor say, Don't do this. And you, are, you stop doing it. Don't do that. You have stopped doing it. Don't do this. You stop doing it. Okay, this, this. A lot of things, at least you have stopped doing because of doctor instruction. If I'm talking, let us hear. A lot you have stopped. You have stopped doing many things in your life. In the, you have stopped doing because of instruction from doctor, because you are looking for good health. And he's telling you this is the only way for good health. Don't, that, that, thou shall not do this. Thou shall not do that. Thou shall not do this. Thou shall not do that. And you stop them. But what of God Almighty? 
how many things you have stopped doing under the instruction of God. Ask yourself how many you have stopped. Compare how many you have stopped because of instruction from doctor and how many you have stopped because of instruction of God. Compare the two. You see you have stopped so many things because of instruction from doctor. And doctor rely on God to do what they are doing. Do what the world say. What does this mean? Mean if the word influence, if the word dominating your heart, you will do what the world say. So you say, ah, I ah, ah. No, because the word has not dominated your heart. How do you take a step of getting the word to the heart? We take the step when you know that the word, your life depending on knowing the word. Your life depending on what? That is, if you don't read, you will die. If you don't read, you will die. Your life depends on knowing the way. If you take that step, you, you, you from time to time take the word in the heart. You will not commit the way in memory. Just read and commit it in memory. Memorize it because you want to preach the way, committing the way, because your pastor says you should read the Bible, you read the Bible. No, because your life depends on knowing the Bible. Read it because your life depends on knowing the Bible. Are you there? The truth is in God's way. Are you with me? Because to many of all, because the way does not dominate in our heart. We believe ah, the word well, there is no truth. The, 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 the healing is in, the, is in guess where. But the Holy Spirit guides us into that understanding. Are you with me? Healing. When you say, be healed, you see healing. God, I'm sick. Heal me, heal me, heal me, you'll be healed. Because the healing is in guess where. But you have not been discovered, you have not been seeing this happen. Yes, because the way has not dominated your heart. It is when it dominates your heart, you begin to see the truth, healing, deliverance, and blessing God's way. Holy Spirit guides us into an understanding of that. Because God's way is the instrument in the hands of Holy Spirit. Let me put it this way. God's way is the instrument in the hand, is the tool. T-O-O-L, tool, in the hands of Holy Spirit. Okay? Let me give, let me give you a good example of what I'm talking about. This is cutlass. This cutlass cannot do work without someone carried to cut what? To cut grass. Holy Spirit is the one now carry the cutlass. Po, 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 po. The cutlass is God's way. The person that carry it is who? Is who? Holy Spirit. So me, the way cannot cut the grass without someone, Holy Spirit, carry it to cut. The way we begin we remain dormant when the Holy Spirit has not uh, involved. The way remain dormant. In Jesus' name, you hear yourself? People around you will hear you, but God will not hear you. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Everybody will hear you. I will hear myself. But God will not hear us. The Holy Spirit has nothing involved. Word of God is a tool, is the tool in the hands of who? Talk to me, talk to me. Maybe I need to go to, so can you get me knife or cutlass there? Don't run, don't run away, don't run away. I'm not using it for anything. Don't be afraid. <laughs> That's what people say, this man who want to carry cutlass inside the church. Maybe you don't understand what I'm saying. Okay, you can bring gun without bullets. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's, it's really pain me. It's very painful. You can preach very well. You can teach very well. You can, you can also preach to others. And people will say, oh, this is a good preacher. The word of God is the tool in the hands of who? Now, I don't want to forget myself because we still have a long way to go. What are we really talk, talking about? Let me take you back, summarize, summar, in summary. So, so you have something to take home, you go to the next line. In summary, what are we talking about? For the past 20 minutes now, we are talking of what? Who? What? We say, one, the truth is in God's way. When we say truth, what is evidence? We say truth. We say the word of God. That is, healing is in God's way. Deliverance is in God's way. Blessing is in God's way. Breakthrough is in God's way. Salvation is in God's way. But the Holy Spirit guides us into an understanding. Without the Holy Spirit, the way will remain without healing. Where we remain without deliverance? Where we remain without breakthrough, without salvation? The word of God will remain without. Listen, put it this way. There is what we call God's way and God's spirit. God's way refreshes our mind. You know? Anybody can refresh your mind. Oh, when you go to the to, to the concert, you see, you begin to dance. Hey! Comedia will come out and say, "Oh yes, yes, yes. everybody." Hey! Guess where refreshes our mind. God's spirit renews our strength. Put it on the screen. God's spirit renews our strength. Guess where? Without this spirit, guess where? Will only refreshes your mind. That is why people can go to church and listen to the word, the word of God. Without God's spirit, it only refreshes your mind. And there you laugh. <laughs> when you get out there, you start your, your normal life. But you need to renew your strength. And it's only God's Spirit can do that. We are taking in summary now. Remember we talk about, yes, plan for success that God gives you gives me, gives everyone. And I've given you a good example. One, the first plant for success. Keep the way 
in your mouth. And I say, by keeping the word in your mouth, that will definitely influence your work. Your conduct, that will dominate, that will enable the word to dominate in your heart. By keeping the word in your mouth, that will enable the word to dominate your heart. And if the word now dominates your heart, it will influence your conduct and your behaviors. But if the way, if you cannot keep the way in your mouth, and you just hear it, you just hear it to preach it, you hear it to teach it, you hear it to talk to people, that's all. That will not dominate in your heart. It is what, what you keep in your mouth that dominates your heart. If I'm talking to you, what you keep in your mouth, see, now I'm keeping saliva in my mouth. Saliva is in my mouth. I return it back again. Because it will be very embarrassing for me to throw saliva here. You say, ah, the man has thrown, he has thrown charm. <laughs> Can you see something? Something came out of this mouth. Ah, the thing why? Ah, he has thrown has throw charm. It's charm. Saliva, return to where you are coming from. <laughs> if the way dominating your mouth, if you keep the way in your mouth, it will dominate in your world. It is what you keep in your mouth that will dominate in your heart. And if the way dominating your heart, it will truly influence your conduct and your behaviors. So to, for the way to dominate in your heart, this is why we have this. That when you live here, as you are sitting down, you are with it. And then after when we, it is time to pray, you put it on again. You are going home, you put it on. You get to your sitting room, sitting down, if you are with it. Oh my God. So that will enable you to meditate day and night in the world and meditating day and night in the world that will enable you to do what the world says the word of God I want to tell your neighbor you must embrace the word of God as the most effective instrument for change tell your neighbor I can't hear you I can hear you again. Embrace the word of God as the most effective instrument for change. For change. Don't waste your time. Nobody can change you. God, the word of God. Nothing can change you but the word of God. Nothing. Nothing can change you. If something tries to change you, it can only change you temporarily. At the time you need that change, you, you can't get it. But when the word of God changes you, it changes you perpetually. If you have this word and the word dominating your heart, all what you are saying now, <laughs> your children, when they say, Daddy, I'm sick, Daddy, I have stomach, you say, Come. In the name of Jesus Christ. And the funny thing is that uh, you will know God hears you. Not, you say, How are you feeling? Esther. Esther, how are you feeling? Are you still feeling it? Uh, yeah, you have reversed the miracle again. <laughs> you have used your mouth to reverse the miracle. <laughs> Yes, are you? Are you still feeling it? Mommy, I'm still feeling it. Because Esther does not want to disgrace you. Because it's your daughter. You say, you say Mommy suffers so much by shouting the name Jesus. <laughs> be he, be he, be he. Esther will open her eye. Why you close her eye? Esther will just open her eye and look at Mommy. Oh, Mommy is suffering. Oh. This time I will say I'm here. Because I don't want him to, to, be, to, to worry. Be he, be he. 
Okay, Esa, how are you feeling? I'm here, mommy, I'm here, mommy. Esa is not here because it's it pity you. <laughs> They pity you because when you are praying, as our open eyes, when you are saying, Oh God, God, you are the one coming, you are the one call you to where? <laughs> you are the one to come in, you have used me to hear that one, you have hit me to use that. And faith is not imitation. Faith cannot be imitated. You are the one who used me to hear this. I've heard this one. This person was complaining, and I prayed for the person, and the person was here. God, this is my daughter. Heal her. Look at you, Pastor. So now, I want to leave you. And uh, like I have said once again, take note. Faith is a lifestyle of trusting in God. It's a lifestyle of trusting in what? In God. Can't you hear what I say? Have faith in God. Have faith in God. All things are possible. Have faith in God. That's all. Faith is a lifestyle of trusting in God. Hallelujah. I know your faith is lifted up. I can hear you. And I know at this time you can you can you can use your faith to put a demand. I can hear you. You mean you can use your faith to put a demand? Because yes. we still continue to talk about that. Faith, faith, faith. About this faith bracelet. We still talk about that. Next, we keep talking about that. I will not just begin to give you until I know that you are satisfied with this explanation. Because you, you, you really, God want to, God want to fortify you. By the time you have it, you have that gift of discernment. Yes. Discernment. Very important. Hallelujah. 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 It, it will lead you to, 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 I mean, when you look like this, something, your heart, you hear the voice in your heart. What to do, what not to do. To go out, no, no, wait. The, your, your gift of vision, dreaming, will be restored by. Yeah, you dream, dream. That is where God is going. You dream, dream. You dream, dream. You dream, dream. Because those things you, you have not been, you have, you have lost the glory. You have lost that glory. Satan just catch us unprepared. Huh? You dream, dream. Those things will be restored. Because then, in the way, will have been dominating your heart. You can't just go on bed or slide on the bed. Just like that. It's not normal. It's a journey that you should take note. Any little time you want to sleep. Don't just sleep. If you know you are about to sleep, ah, I'm not going to sleep. You have to prepare your journey. Because it's a journey, you may come back, you may not come back. And if you come back, it's not good for you to be attacked. Many challenges you are having now, 99% of challenges you are having now, is through dream. You are being attacked. Let's say 90%, true dream. If you take your time to sit down and think about since beginning when you were very young, small, the dream, dream, dream you had in the past, you see those things are becoming manifested. If you dream today and you have not seen the sort of that dream in tomorrow, if care is not taken, you have to do something about that. So therefore, when you are going, you are about to sleep or you are sitting down in your cushion, in your chair, or lying 
this should be your hand. You start communicating. Connect this to your heart. Lord, take more of me. Your mercy and, and favor is all I need. I'm about to sleep. I'm about to go on journey. Magnify your name. Prove yourself. Forgive me all my wrong. In Jesus' name, you go into choruses, you begin to sing beautiful song with it. Sing, 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 sing. You are gone. The, what you have in your hand, you don't know where you drop it, maybe on the bed or on the floor. You are gone. That is a wonderful journey. What happened to you before you sleep will be translated in your dream. That would be a good example, like nightmare you used to have. If you are not happy, somebody disturb you so much, or you have a phone call or a message, or somebody insult you or whatever, and you think about it before you go to bed, you will see what has happened to you. You begin to have nightmares. Uh, those of you, maybe you don't have anything to eat, and you just go to bed to sleep. In fact, Satan will give you food. Or you are thinking of how to get money to pay your debt, or your house rent. And already, the, that very week is the last day given to you in your house. And you carry that impression to bed. And you lie down, you sleep up. That is what you think about before you finally sleep. My friend, you count a lot of money in your dream. By the time you wake up, you say, ah, where is the money I can? <laughs> where is the money? They will even carry you to the bank and, and show you plenty of money. You can't, 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 you, you'll be happy. You say, happy, happy, no, happy, happy, no, happy, happy, no, Somebody just knocked the book, 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 you wake up and say, where is the money I was counting? <laughs> so thank you. Hallelujah. Once again, I want to remind you once again, everything is here, but time to read it, okay? And if at all I want to read, it's only five of international happening, because uh, I'm seeing something happen any moment from now of international issue, because what? What has happened in Syria, what happened in Iraq, what's happened in Libya, the militants that are doing that, they have entered many countries. They have entered many countries now, but they have not started strike. They are just looking for how to penetrate good places. They are painter. They are human beings like you, and they, they, many of them look decent. Many of them are not doing that because they are poor. They are rich. Many are rich. They enter, they put on suit and tie like you. And uh, they are moving around. They have got, they just want to go to, many of them want to go to accommodation where they will stay, where they will resettle, where they will become. Um, and they, when enter and they make a friend, we have to enter some companies, some organization. By the time the trouble starts again. You just hear the bomb here. Boo! How did they enter? No, they have entered so long. They are there. So, how do you get out of this mess? So, I mean, Superpower country, they have to be vigilant. Many of these people are in their country. Superpower nation, they should be vigilant. So 
scripture is one of the I want to read for you so that it will help the us. I remember five years, uh, four years ago when I say homeland security, I said it in America, I said it here before the, that, I say homeland security, they should tight very well, but then nothing happened, but after that prophetic word, three months of that time, so it's one of the things I want to really talk about, international word, prophetic word. So when we sit down here, we see what is happening in Syria. Boo, boo, boo. You see what is happening in Iraq. Boo, boo, boo. It's happening in the Egypt. Boo, boo, boo. We say, ah, ah. But some of these people that are doing boo, boo, boo there, they have entered your country. They are there already now. They are there, sitting down, settle down, looking for accommodation, want to settle down, want to make a friend enter important places before they start their job. So, mean, can, shall we say this trouble in Syria and many other countries will not stop? This is why I call this year a year of bridge. Crossing bridge. If you cross it, the next year, 2015, those who will remain, the challenges will have come to an end then. So that is about that. We talk about this. So let's just listen to, we talk about more of that later. Because uh, if I want to talk about it, mean, I will, many things I will not be able to do. Last time I could not move around the crowd to give a prophetic word and people are they are supposed to attend to because of this so if I'm to say the prophetic uh, I mean for the international community and the nations it means I will say it I'll go to emergency streets and many things I will not be able to address so let's leave this one later okay but this one is also more important than any others any other more important than any others so let's listen to just one of uh, the things so that we move next Oui, téléspectateurs, nous allons maintenant euh, écouter un cas, nous allons regarder la vidéo premièrement avant d'écouter ce cas en direct restez connectés thank you so um, I listen to the I think it's here. I listened to this, the testimony given concerning this sticker. You know, I, I'm supposed to talk and explain more detail about this sticker. But I say, I know God will reveal to you. There are more to this what I'm holding. Because there are two stickers here. Two different stickers. This one, this 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 object, we say, hey, lead me in Jesus' name. What is that? Lead me in Jesus' name. We put it this way. We say, this one, this thing, lead me in Jesus' name. It looks strange to everyone, and we don't know what it means. We only see the sign of love, heart, a tongue, blood. Don't put this one in your house, and don't put it in your property. This not. It's for you personally. Can you remove the, put, put the letter down so that people can see, or you raise it up, the table at the table here. Can you see, lead me in Jesus' name. It's not for you to place it on, this, on the car, at the car, a sticker, no, it cannot be sticker. And you can't place it in the 
probably your property or your bedroom. No, it's for you, your pocket. That is what you know what I'm talking about. I said I will not tell you. Ask God to reveal to you what is there. It has to do with your spirit, your heart. Your heart, that is what Satan is staggered. Once you can arrest your heart, you have control over your life. Like what we are saying that when the word dominates your heart, it will, it will truly influence your conduct and your behaviors. This is half. It's for you. Because I have not talked so much about it. But you begin to see what is happening now. People will begin to come, you will see. You just see yourself out of the mess, out of trouble. I mean, if you have this, somebody promise you, and you get to him, he must cut it out. Because the person that promised you, his heart will not be at, at rest until he carry it out. So, promise is dead. This is why you have to, to be careful of what you say. What you cannot do, don't say you do it. Say what you can do. Don't promise what you cannot carry out. So, and time is in the past, they toss you around. Because you don't know what it is, you put it in your pocket, you, you carry it up and down, you don't know what it is. When you put it in your pocket, it works with your heart. It works with your heart. To know God's opinion about others and about yourself. And when you put it in your heart and you are going, if where you are going is not the right place to go, something will definitely stop you. You hear the voice. If you put it in your, with you and you are going, the name Jesus and the blood of Jesus will continue to ring in your heart. Will continue to ring in your heart. So that is about this. The car one is not here, but the other one. This one is for your bedroom. Take it, the other one. This one, I've talked about it. But let it come and help them. Can you see this one? Now it's clear now. Let love lead. This one is clear. This one is clear to you, have you? Let love lead. This one is clear to you. Let love lead. Not that love in, on the, uh, in the world. That is why you see crown, you see blood gushing out. Not the love in the world, but love beyond hatred. Love beyond intimidation. Love of God is what I, we are talking about. There are two love, love and love of God. This is love of God. Not love T for tat. So, thank you. Okay, next, please. Let's listen to one touching experience out of thousand, after that we move. Yes, next at the table. What you're about to listen, just listen, don't make, don't laugh, it's a personal experience. You also, you can know what mighty, our mighty God can do about this deliverance of a thing. It's an experience because uh, there are almost 600 of them that want to share the deliverance. I say, okay, let's listen to just one. The rest, we can listen to them next meeting. Okay, watch. Viewers at home. <laughs> Church of All Nations, the presence of Most High God.
fills the auditorium as Wiseman Racine moves in the midst of the people, touching them one after the other. As he continues to offer the prayer of faith in the name of Jesus Christ, on getting to this woman, the evil spirit inside of her screams out. Viewers, let us watch how the fire of the Holy Ghost consumed the darkness in her life in Jesus' name. My name of Jesus Christ. Who are you? Speak. Wait, before who are you? Put your head down, let them touch you. This wise man. Just let them touch you. Make sure it's one of the grace God given us. After I finish my own, they will come out. Everyone, they have to touch you. If they touch, if they want to touch you, this is why we have that sticker. Begin to say, Lord, take more of me, give me more of you before they touch you. Prepare yourself. Don't begin to look at the people they are touching. Before they get to you, and when they are touching you, be in an attitude of prayer before they touch you. Whatever within, outside, when they touch you, listen to this one. Listen to it. This happened last week here. Uh -huh. The fire of the Holy Ghost consumed the darkness in her life in Jesus' name. My name is Jesus Christ. Who are you? Speak out. Who are you? We can't hear anything. I mean, who is on the table? Chers téléspectateurs, nous sommes en train de regarder la vidéo d'une délivrance faite par l'homme sage Racine. Nous allons écouter en direct dans quelques minutes la confession de cette femme. Regardez votre écran. Nos momentos más, vamos a observar el video de una liberación. Manténgase pendiente. Nos momentos continuamos. to this woman I've destroyed her because I want her to serve me what have and you done she refused what have you done to her destiny destiny yes <laughs> what is destiny <laughs> what is the destino so you I've destroyed the destiny there is no destiny. Is destiny what have you done to her family wow you family <laughs> I've killed all the family. How do you operate? I operate by letting them to steal and kill them by gun. By gun? Yes. How did you enter her? I enter her right from bed. Because the father... I hope you listen to that. He said the spirit said he has killed all the family. How? By giving them the spirit of stealing and they arrest them one by one somewhere and they, they shot them. Some firing square. Still, murderer, they kill them like that. That is why you have to listen what the mighty God is doing here. Take it back. Let's listen from the beginning. It's, it will okay. mm -hmm. And kill them by gun. By gun. Yes. How did you enter her? I enter her life from bed. Because the father entre took her pequeña. from me. Porque su padre no las entregó. What have you done to the family? Family. Yes. I killed the father Mata by stealing 
by gun that is arm robbery the mother all the junior brothers one by one you will get the demon in the name of Jesus come out come out in the name of Jesus Christ out come out in the name of Jesus in Jesus name thank you Lord stand up Continue to wash, wash. Do you remember what you have said? No, sir. Jesus Christ has delivered you from the evil spirits. Thank you, Jesus. You destroyed your life and your home and your family. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What are we talking about? Listen, it, she will come out now. Because there, there was no time for these uh, wise men. They need to touch everyone. As long as there is enough time for them, they will ask many questions. But they just want to. There are a lot of things the spirits inside you will say that will help the whole world. And people view her at home. As we are talking now, look, Millions of people they are sitting watching Imanet TV through internet, Facebook, YouTube. People are all over the world, even some country that are in the midnight. They do not sleep, they are watching and they are learning lessons. They don't know many problems in their family, how it come about, but through what they are watching, they know not only deliver them, but people concerned will come out to also to tell you. Look at what this lady said. He never knew. The spirit used inside her as a dwelling place. At home. Living there. But I said, does not know? She doesn't know. She only knows that I have a nightmare. Uh, I fly. I did it. But no more dream everybody has. Isn't it? Eh? But she will come. Enter there. Enter there. If she knew that that thing is inside her. I believe she will not even come to this church and sit down. Because with what she demonstrated after the deliverance, she was ashamed. If she knew she would say all this kind of thing, something is in her to say this kind of thing. She knew her father was killed, brother was killed of armed robbery, yeah, stealing, killing, fire in the square, all those things. But she never knew that the spirit that is giving them that thing is inside her. When immediately after the deliverance, she was ashamed to cover her face. She, she, she's worried. Let's hear from her what she confessed. What happened to the family? So you, you can now sit down and think about your own family. What has happened? What has happened in your family is enough for you. It sort of propels into another. Or you sit down and begin to talk about. Uh, okay, look at what has happened all over the world today. Every nation has challenges from be, from top to the beginning from local government commissioner governor president king queen everybody has problem and you keep asking you will not abandon your own problem in the house or you begin to attack commissioner governor president your own is is pregnant let us listen to what they're saying So you will know that the genesis of your problem is from home. Something is in you that is, no, it's not normal. Let's hear. Let's listen. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. <laughs> I thank God today to stand in your presence. As you people have watched it in this room, that okay. my name is Gifty Torubri. The man beside me is my husband, that is Samuel Kote. This is my first son that I give birth to him, Kenneth Kote. This is my daughter, Naomi Kote, Emmanuel Kote. For today is the happiness day of my life. 
As you people have watched him in the screen, that is how it is. In fact, this story goes, as you have seen, that a great old man. In fact, it's true that my father is a real arm robber. A arm robber with guns, stealing and killing. And according to the story, even though I see the paper when my grandfather showed it to me, he keep the paper and show it to me that this is the time they kill your father. That is 1976 or 77. Two brothers at one day, the same father, bear the same Torubri, Torubri. One same day, they shot them. From that time going, the spirit enter my family. That is my mother's side. All the, my brothers, my uncles, that is the junior brothers of my mother, all of them is the same arm robber. After killing one, another one will take over again. That is how they die. Even though the last one happened at this Agbado crossing, that is 1994, 95, during Christmas time there. This same Agbado crossing here. They killed two of them one same day at Agbado crossing police station and they put them on the floor. There are five, but my own uncles are two. They put them on the floor that same day. I hope you are following because the, the accent is very strong. You say all the family possess the spirit of stealing, killing, murderer, arm robber. You say they have killed the father, the brother, and they killed them when they went to law. That's a lot of them, they have killed. Place at the table, please. We have just heard from the sister that she was confessing about the spirit of armed robbery that we just saw on the screen a moment ago. She said that her father was a notorious armed robber and she was shown a picture of her father right from 1976 when he was executed because of this armed robbery. And she said that since then that spirit of armed robbery has never left her family, rather it continued to go through all her uncles and then went into all of her brothers making all of them an armed robber after one was killed because of armed robbery the spirit would now transfer into the next one making them go out still steal kill and destroy committing armed robbery before that person will be killed in the same act of armed robbery and it would the spirit would now enter into the next relative take it back again those people, the spirit of armed robbery, killing, stealing, have destroyed. Take it back a bit, okay? The, the sister. The way my father died, my father died in armed robbery. When I grew up, I heard the story about my father. And my grandfather showed me the paper, the newspaper. That time we are in worry when my grandfather showed it to me that this is the paper of my father, the day they killed him. He keep this paper because of something, so that I can see it. And it's true, I see the paper, so that I put that thing in my head. But going, going up, my uncles, that is the junior brother of my own mother, the same mother, the same father, started that same robbing issue. Robbing, killing and stealing, killing people, if they kill one, another one will take over. That is how they kill them one by one. Even though the last one that happened is this Agbado crossing year. That is year 90, 95, 96, over there. I can't remember, but it's December 22nd. I remember the date very well. When they kill them, and they put them on the floor. People come from different places to come and look them. That same day in Agado Crossing Police Station here. If people can, somebody that stay in Agado Crossing can remember that year. It says they have killed some armed robberies. My own uncles too are among them that same day. Going to my mother's side. My mother too, her life is just the same thing like criminal. Because she say, like uh, uh, Yoba people say, Omota, living this Omota life. Dancing for fella, smoking, drinking, with the selling in their air. And she married two different men that she gave birth to, armed robbery. The one that followed me, the father too, 
He said, I'm robber. After killing the father, that is 1982, that is where my mother, junior sister, to take over. Our own first son, to the father, to he said, I'm robbing. You see? The sister that followed that one to the same arm robbery. That means that all the four women in that family born with criminal. Not only criminal, criminal with gun. That they kill, they steal and kill. When my mother, the time when everything happened like that, my mother become... We have just been hearing from our sister of how the spirit of armed robbery has been affecting her entire family. And she took it back to the part where she said that she was shown the newspaper of the day both her father and his younger brother, that is to say her uncle, were killed on the same day because of this act of armed robbery when they were caught and killed in the act. She said that people came from all over the place to come and see the two bodies were laid on the floor and people came from all over to see. It was a big spectacle of how two people from the same family were killed over the same issue of armed robbery. She then said that from there, the spirit of armed robbery continued to enter into her mother's side of the family and it made her mother live a very wayward life, smoking Indian hemp, and other atrocities and she later also went into the same armed robbery until 1982 when she was also killed in this act. From then she said the junior sister of her mother which is her aunt also took over the same action of armed robbery, prostituting, killing, stealing and destroying and that has gone through all the sisters and brothers in her, father, in her mother's side of the family. Even after they married they continued in this wayward uh, lifestyle an action of killing, stealing, destroying and armed robbery. That is the way all the men go inside the family. Go to the woman's side. My mother worked like, he worked a lot to work, even though stay in hotel, doing that same work. The junior sister too, the same thing. All the girls, it's a lot, give birth to a criminal, not one, that is two, two children. After, my mother died, even though he died in, the, in Kedja Hospital here. Nobody buries government property because all the people that die, they are government property. He too, she too, she's a government property because of that stain of killing and stealing. That is the stain of Amrabra inside that blood. She too, she's a government property. Me, myself too, I just look it, I say, well, let me. Me, myself too, I follow men from one man to another. I sleep with different men. This is the first time that I will say it, my husband will hear. If I said I should count men that I've slept with, I can't count it. Because that is the line that we are on each side. But if my husband would, I would say, oh, I just sleep with only two men. That is the father of the first children and him. So that after the death of my mother, I see my husband. That is where we met. And he traveled to Ghana. I just give birth to my son here and the one that follow her. He traveled to Ghana. Where he said, uh, give, if you didn't see me, you can come to Ghana and give me paper. But as he left, I just take it out. This is my chance. I started following men of Obuto. The compound that I'm staying, the owner of the compound, we become a lover. That we, we move together and not alone. The, we have heard from her once again. Well, okay, okay, you talk and we have heard from her once again of how she said that this spirit of arm robber affect all the sisters and all of her brothers. She said that all the brothers went into armed robbery and all the sisters were also criminals and went into the acts of prostitution and harlotry. And even if the sisters married, they married to armed robbers who later also when they gave birth to children, the same children were affected with the spirit of armed robbing and went into similar criminal activities. She first she went on to say that almost no members of her families have been buried by her family because all of them died in the acts of crime and committing atrocities and it was the government that buried ma the majority of her family members. She herself... Okay, um, ma Madam, 
So can you tell us about yourself and after your deliverance, how you, are you feel? Man of God, my son too have started the same thing, the same stealing, just this December 22nd when I was in Nigeria. I, I hope you listen to that now. The little child to have started stealing. Now, if deliverance is not taking place, it will be key and robbery. Okay, start it. Okay, let's listen. This boy. Uh-huh. My son. This, this, is, your, this is your son? Yes, yeah, this is my son. He has started. Yeah, I was in Nigeria yeah, when my husband called me, that around 1 p.m., when my husband come down, look what is happening. Just uh, not uh, cannot go and steal Fawu, which is when people gather him, they want to beat him. But as they bring him cameras, because of the sticker in the door mat, in fact, the father said that very day he's laughing. Like if not so, like maybe they will beat him and that is where he will, he will die. Because father and mother, their grandfather and mother, their arm robber, with the grandchildren too, all the men too, they have died in arm robber. Now it's turned to my own child. That is like fourth generation. So that, man of God, I have four boys. Please help me. I am I'm on my knees. I don't want to be a mother of arm robber or a mother of our Lord. Man of God, please help me with my four children. My family are of state. Even though in my God, my mother's side, they don't want to see us in that family. We just heard from my mother who said that her son has even started the same appalling act of stealing and that recently her husband called her late in the night that people had come to beat up the son and take him away because of the act of stealing he had been caught in and if not for the grace of God that might have been the end of his life also. And she was now pleading. Okay, you as a person, you came here for deliverance. Tell us your experience before, Papa, you, before I, your deliverance, huh? Before my, my deliverance, I come from Ghana because of uh, uh, financial problems. I didn't come because of uh, anger because my mind is not yet. I didn't tell anybody this secret. It's between me and my God. I always keep it. But when I come here that Sunday, when was my Rasi is coming, the time of laying here, when was, was my Rasi is coming, I wanted to run, but I can't run. When he lay his hand on me, it's like... Okay, tell me, why you wanted to run? When the uh, uh, wise man Rasi was coming, you said you wanted to run. What caused you to run? The spirit just entered me and said, I should run, I should move. You listen to that. He said immediately he saw the wise man coming. One spirit entered him. Ah. And that, run, 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 run. He could not help. He said, this wise man, when they are coming towards you, and you prepare for them, preparing means your spirit must be in one accord. To be in, a, in accord with them is to get yourself prepared and pray. That's they say, test all spirits. These men that are coming, yes. You begin to say, Lord Jesus, I want an encounter with God. A mighty encounter. Mighty encounter. Mighty encounter in the name of Jesus. So when you begin to pray before they come, by the time they are coming to you, the spirit in them, which is the spirit of God, will testify to your spirit. Hey! You, it's either you start running or you start jittering or something will definitely happen the encounter will definitely happen when they touch you that will be a touch of heaven We heard from our sister just now, she said that she actually came to the synagogue church of all nations because of financial problems and not the problem of armed robbing in her family or the spirit of stealing. She said that when she came to the church and wise man Racine was coming to pray for her, she wanted to run. She felt a spirit enter and tell her to run. But why you wanted to run? What happened to you? Why you wanted to run? Man of God, the spirit just sent out to me that I should run. So that I won't allow the wise man to lay hand on me. Okay, what used to happen to you before you come here? I used to, 
I used, I used to dread, I have the spirit of stealing and I have the spirit of, um, yes, I, I can look another man and I will video everything just between myself. Over the coming to Nigeria, yes, I have to tell my husband, my husband don't want me to come because he knows the weakness of my side, so that I have to lie for him that I am pregnant, so that he can allow me to come to Nigeria. This is it's right now I'm saying. So you listen to that. He knew he had a spirit of stealing and us all sorts, but she was not here for that deliverance. She was here because she needs money. She's facing hardship. She never believed that some anything can nothing can deliver or remove that spirit. Let's play the video that portion. Please at the table. That portion I asked them to rewind it. We just heard from the sister saying that with the spirit she knew she had before coming to the synagogue church for nations was the spirit of stealing, lust and fornication. She said that if she saw a man, it would be as if she had videotaped it in her mind and later she would satisfy herself with that. And her husband also was aware of this problem before coming to the church. But this was not the reason why she came. She said she came because of financial problems. You listen to that. If the case is, now the thing has affected the children. Because that one is, is, is this boss mature, that is how they know he has the spirit of stealing. The little one too, going to the port, taking meat, go to the port, drinking this, taking what their parent is not giving them, they may not count it to be stealing, because there's little. But this one, because he carries somebody shaking, and they pursue him, that's why they know he's stealing. He has the spirit of stealing. The children have been affected. Now the question that is, think about yourself. Go back home again. Back home. Think about yourself. Your antecedent. Your track record. I think deliverance is very important. Let's ask her. After your deliverance, how are you feeling now? Man of God, I, I feel okay because after the delivery, I'm not more thinking about people as now because I used to sleep with people as now. No matter, I, I don't know how to say no. There is a time my husband no and he nearly collapsed the one midnight when somebody called me. What of this stealing? The stealing, I'm not more, I'm not more stealing, daddy. The thought of it. It's not in me. The thought of stealing is not in me. Because I, in fact, if I see that once my husband comes inside, he keep his pocket, he gives us that. Give it to this lady, the young boy. Okay, how, how do you been influenced to see? How do you come about stealing? Yeah, I work with my friends. We went and stole a farm. Uh, the, the day that they caught us, they brought us to uh, our fathers. I say, wh how, how do you tell us how you have been influenced to steal? How the thought of stealing come to you? The thoughts. Uh, thought. Like, I move around in the night. Okay, you move around in the night? Yes. Okay, sorry. Where? Okay, because. Can we see the, 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 the cassette? Play the cassette. What was at the table? Viewers, let us watch how the fire of the Holy Ghost consumed the darkness in her life in Jesus' name. My name is Jesus. Who are you? Oh, speaker, who are you? I am the great old woman. Mm. What happened to this woman? I'm described out. Because I want her to serve me. Do you know anything about the great woman you are talking about? Yes, prophet. I've heard the story. My mother told me the story. Uh -huh. What did your mother told you about the story? My mother told me that one day she was sleeping and she dreamed that she's in the swing, bathing, and an old woman come out from the river and bring out a pot. The pot is bringing out smoke. 
And the old man tells her to put his hand inside the pot. Anything she sees, she should bring it out. How many years now? Do your mother told you this story. My mother told me this story. That is 1985. You listen to that. He said this confession. What is happened to her? He said her mother told. He had the story from her mother. Now. Okay, let's play the confession again and ask her the question. Uh huh. Uh huh. At the table. Guys, who are you? Oh, speak up. Who are you? I am the great old woman. Mm. What have you done to this woman? I will describe her because I want her to serve me. Now the question now: Did you did you aware when you were saying this? No, man of God, because you, this matter is between me and my God. It's a disgrace matter. I say, when you were saying this, were you aware? Were you in your, are you conscious of what you were saying? No. You did not know? At all. You, don't, you just don't know what you were saying? No. But now you can now remember that your mommy told you, have you? Yes. That's why, that is why you are ashamed? Yes, sir. I hope you, because there's a lesson for many of us. You, many things you will say when they touch you, you don't know, you are not even, I mean, you'll be very surprised by the time you finish saying it, you'll now watch what you're saying. You say, ah, okay, I heard about this thing 20 years ago. Okay, I heard this story. Oh, 40 years ago, I heard this story. But you're never aware, you are not conscious of what you are saying. You don't say something you are not conscious of. Because it is the spirit that was talking then. Hmm. This, 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 this mystery. Huh? Huh? Yes. Huh? Yes. There's many things you need to know. Many things. If not, one cannot have complete peace. There are many things you need to know about yourself. That means you don't even know yourself. Tell your neighbor, I don't know myself. <laughs> Tell your neighbor again. Tell your neighbor again. I can't hear you. Do you know the reason why many will confess that they don't know themselves? Because you know, right from your small age, what you actually wanted to become is not what you are still striving, strive to achieve that. And two, when you look at all your effort and what you have been doing, in terms of hard work, in terms of work, compared to many, you begin to say, oh, what is wrong? You have many classmates, you have many colleagues all over the world that you can now begin to say, oh, look at my colleague, look at me, what's wrong? You agree you don't know yourself. You don't know yourself. You don't know yourself. You don't know yourself. You pray, not that you know God will hear you, and you don't know when God will hear you, and you don't know when God will hear you. You only see results. If I'm talking. I say you see results. It is the result you see, you know God hear you. That is why we we'll mention our Christian life by our situation. Tell your neighbor, that is why we mention our Christian life. We measure our Christian life by our situation. If I'm sick now, I'm not a Christian because I'm sick. If I'm a Christian, why should I see? If I'm a Christian, why should I pray? To God to hate me. I'm not here. I'm not a Christian. We measure our Christian life by our situation. When you are poor, you are not a Christian. When you are sick, you are not a Christian. And a man can be sick and yet be a Christian.
a man can be poor yet be a friend of Jesus. Because we don't know, we don't know ourselves. That is how we measure our Christian life by our situation. I'm, I'm buried. Why should I be buried? I'm not a Christian. Because my prayer is no answer. I'm not a Christian. And a, man, a woman can be buried, yet a candidate of heaven. This world, the, the whole thing is mystery. On the last day, many will reach and the Lord will say, I don't know you. You say you are a Christian. Look at what do you mean? Hmm. You don't know yourself. That is why you make sure your, your Christian life by your situation. And the Bible says affliction, situation, challenges, and death for our own spiritual benefits. Say your devil. Situation. I mean affliction. I mean challenges. Are met for our spiritual benefits. Sometimes facing temptation, we have sometimes been tempted so that we may pray the more. Tell you about we are sometimes tempted. We are sometimes facing difficulty. We are sometimes having challenges so that we may pray demand. So, today, the singular brother, there is no, everyone here today, 99%, the challenge we are having, the problem we are having is not to one. You measure your Christian life by your situation. You measure your Christian life by your situation. That's just it. There's no other problem. Ah. 99, all of us, when we are sick, we are down in our spirits. And that sickness should, 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 should meet for our spiritual benefit. But opposite is the case. But when you have good health and there is money in your pocket, then you begin to laugh in the church. Sit down. So here is uh, our sister. What else again do you want to hear? You have heard it all. How do you get out of your family mess? That is the next question. Tell your neighbor, how do I get out of my family mess? Tell your neighbor again. No matter, let me tell you until. No matter, no matter. If you are taken from this family, from this family now, to the most richest in the world, or the president of the most powerful country, you are taken from down down family and taken there. What is your family here will follow you. 
even in a means of wealth, a means of comfort, a means of good health, where you are coming from until you are delivered, that will follow you there. From the a means of wealth, a means of good health, a means of riches, if you are taken from there to another place, what is there to will follow you there. We call it that's what we call contact. Say contact. Ah. Look at I'm giving you sticker. What is the meaning of that? I say I give you sticker. I give you sticker. They say the April that touched Paul were taken to the sick and they were healed. Contact that touched Paul body. Because Paul's body touched Jesus Christ. The body of the spirit of Paul joined himself with the spirit of who? Christ. And if you now join yourself to Paul, now you there is a contact. If you now take it from him to another place, the contact from that place to that place, that is contact. In the same way, when you are taken from one family to another family, from one family to another family, contact there, you are taking it. You see many families will be dying of cancers, cancer, 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 cancer. Many suicide, suicide, suicide. Many this, that, that. Many that, that, that. Many that, that, that. that. Contact. This is why we need to be born again. No one can be born again unless you are delivered. Unless one is what? Delivered. Deliver. When you are delivered, you are taken from one place to another. It's by deliverance. So just play. We, we are learning a lot from this lady. Can you play it a bit and let's and move forward? Contact. I've described out because I want out to serve me. What have you done? She refused. What have you done to this city? Destiny? Yes. <laughs> what is destiny? Yes. I describe the destiny. There is no destiny in social society. What have you done to family? Wow. Good. Family. <laughs> I've killed all the family. How do you operate? I operate by letting them steal and kill them by gun. By gun. Yes. Now, what is happening now? They are bold. Where the spirit live? Are bold. That is A B O D E. The spirit live there. That spirit has been delivered. So it's not hard that it's been delivered. The whole family. So where the spirit come and walk and go back there. Go out and walk there and go back there. He is telling me about his son now. I don't need to touch his son. Because the spirit that tormented his son has been taken over. It's not that the son will no, it's that son. What where the spirit lives, you know, it's like a rat. It lives inside the hole. It will come out in the night and go to the bush and eat farm and eat some cassava in the farm. The farmer will come out, come to the farm and say, ah, look at my cassava, look at my corn. There is some rat as they saw my corn. He will continue to complain. The rat is inside where? Abroad. 
where is she living? But if hunter now definitely discover that hole and begin to dig the hole and get the rat, whoop, will the rat go to the farm again? That's it. So you have listened to the, his uh, confession. He said he has killed. Is that dwelling place avoided? Is the dwelling place where those spirits come out to do the job? They come out and they will not kill her because it's a house. It will be there. And if not, the, the, this deliverance takes place, they will make sure you can spend 100 years. It was, ah, I said, it's dear to them. They will not kill her. Because our mission is to, uh, you, this spirit will be going out to do, to do the job come back. And they will not cut her, and they will not kill her. They will, he will do it, he will escape with it. But I will continue to live. But other they will be killing them. But I said, you will just be given that spirit. So that's all. But the questioner, the spirit is somewhere being locked perpetual. It's inside the cage and it will remain in that cage perpetual. Then, what do I mean? The judgment. Amen. is the deliverance. When God delivers you, that spirit now, I know many will say, where is it going? Don't be afraid, it's not going anywhere. I hope you will not go to that direction, you will not go to your country. The whole family spirit has gone out of this lady, where is it going now? Inside that key, the judgment. The judgment day, the door will be open and it will come out. To, to, to witness and to testify, to talk how he has ruined the war. It's inside the cage and will remain there perpetually till the judgment day. It's not going anywhere again. So that's it. I have answered many of your questions that where is he going? You are free. <laughs> I said, many of you keep asking, where is he going? He go nowhere. That is the spirit of God for you. When this, all the spirit wants, you are delivered. I'm this. I'm a pata. I'm this. I'm that. I'm this. Hey, out. Oh, hey, in Jesus' name. I'm free. I'm free. Oh, it's, it, back to the cage. Back to the cage. Back to the cage. God need to open your eyes. You see what I'm talking about. And they will remain there till the judgment day. They too will come out and the fire they are talking about, who is going to those fire? Hey, who is going there? The father, the grandfather, whoever they have killed by gone because of their atrocity, those spirits came out. When you catch the robber, arm robber, and you were about to fire them, you say, talk. What do you want to say? Do your last word. Some will say, and now uh, they have sorry, they, 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 that, before they will now go. Immediately the first blood, boom, boom, boom. When the body do like this, bam, and they say it's gone. It is the spirit that left the body. You cannot kill the spirit by gun. You cannot kill the spirit that's still by machine gun. The spirit that kill, destroy, cannot be killed by gun. It is the flesh, blood, and flu you can only kill. The cause of that stealing will come out of their body and look at People around that are watching how they are being executed. If there is anywhere he can enter among them, you will look. Look at the body that is available. After they finish killing them, some will become thief there immediately. Because the, it will, the spirit will continue to wandering about, wandering about, looking for a way to go. 
where to go, where to go, where to go. But if it were to be the Spirit of God that did do the... I hope you quite understand now. That is why you cannot eliminate the thief all over. It's, the more you kill them, the more they are increasing. Because that spirit is not being killed. It is the flesh you kill. You think that by the time we kill them, kill them, kill them, kill them, they will not know. The spirit, you kill this body, the spirit go and looking for another body to enter. You can't there, no. So thank you very much. So um, you have listened, what happened to her? Her body is aboard where the spirit lives. And that spirit has been captured, is taken over by God. Now the family completely, but they have to live for God now. If they are not living for God, they are likely to get that spirit somewhere. Because it's not only their family that have that spirit, there are other family too. Okay, they have to live for God so that God will take control because it is the word of God that can make them maintain that blessing. So thank you very much. Thank you. My Your God. advice to the whole world. My God. Man of God, please, I'm begging you. The other time, to my, my son took a knife. So you start his father. You call me in Nigeria because it's inside our family. A junior should stop. A senior, senior should stop. It's the same. They want to see blood. They want to see people killed. It is that's the minding of the spirit. The spirit wants to kill. At least it's a mission for everyone. Once you have that spirit of arm robber, at least you have money to kill so, so many so, so, so number of people. It's a mandate. You must kill so, so number before they kill you. Thank you, man of God. I will speak to the advice and I pray God should help me. But man of God, please, I want to beg you for a help. Because the last property my husband has, I've made him to sell it because it's after the delivery I started remember. Because my father, my mother with his brother said their father property, their house with in, in Lagos and in Badon. So at the last property to he has, that is land with building on top, I made him to sell it without no hudo, one penny. So now we are staying. No, don't worry. You say what? Well, okay, say if I know, just one minute. Because we are, we are staying in somebody's house. There is no any achievement. Yeah, that is the reward of your past. Now you are delivered, you begin to enjoy the fruitful privileges of being a part of the family. Amen. What, what were you expecting upon the atrocity you have committed? If I, you even have outside to sleep, you are supposed to sleep on, this, on the tree. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, God is merciful God. If not, you are supposed to live on the tree. Going by what you have done, or uh, you live in the graveyard. Because some people live in the graveyard. And, uh, but for you to even have a outside to sleep, you are, God is merciful. Now you are delivered, you will begin to enjoy the full privileges of being part of God's family. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. So, you listen to that? It's delivered. Good Samaritan. He need a house. Now, like we are talking now, if you just sit down there, you just walk towards them and say, you say you have no house to live. Okay, okay, let me get you two bedroom flat. How much is that? Throw some money, I give you. Go and do that for your neighbor. That's it. He's telling you, do it, do it, do it quick. Do, do quick. That is, do quick, do quick. Okay? So, and uh, more other people will do many. So, okay, thank you, thank you. Thank you, go and sit down. So we have people that have that heart. People that are happy that you are delivered, they will come and meet you. And they will get you two bedroom flats. You will come back and share the testimony. You are happy she is delivered. Let us see your hand. You are happy, happy, no, da, da, da. Happy, happy, no, da, da, da. If you're happy and you know how you do
you listen to that? The amen they are saying, go by D. Say D. That is D double E D. Not just mouth, amen. Amen me, amen. Meter giver to bedroom flat. If you are happy, happy dog. If you are happy, happy dog. If you are happy, I be no be two bedroom flats. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Uh, your faith is lifted. Hello. Let us see your hand. This is what ministry is all about. Ministry is, this is what it's all about. Can you see, this ministry, can you see? We don't know who is who, who is millionaire, who is poor, who is you know. We should be compassionate. Any ministry that is not consigning about the poor cannot see the grace of God. Your consigning should merely go towards the poor. And why everyone, every one of all that God has blessed the grace of God, we should throw it towards the poor and elevate the standard of living. You will see this morning, nobody has identified you as someone who is deeply rich. No, it's between you and your God. Identification for that is not here. When it is time to give your thanksgiving, your offering, whether you put paper inside it or sand, or you write a letter and say nobody wants to know what you put in the paper. It's between you and God. Okay? Any ministry that depends on tight offering cannot grow. I repeat again. Any ministry that depends on offering tight cannot work. Mm cannot grow. If that is what I depend on, I will not be here today. God will send the innocent people. And when they are given me, they will even beg me. Please, sir. Please, sir. Collect it, sir. They will beg, please, please. My life depends on you collect it. If you don't collect it, because this revelation God given to me, send me to you. I say, no, let me ask God too, before collecting from you. <laughs> let me ask God, before collecting it from you, please give me time to ask. It must be two sides. If God shows you to give this, let me ask God to see whether I should collect it. That is how God works. So that it gives ministers of God freedom to talk, to address the issue without prejudice, without mindset, without afraid of anybody. You know what it means if a minister of God can talk without afraid of anybody, without fear, without it just address the way God wanted to address. You speak the mind of God, not being in cage. So this is it. This is it. And the church should be a church of all nations. Whether your church is two people going there, begin to have a particular member, member, particular member, worship and go and live for God. You may not come tomorrow. Another person will take your position again. You may go to another church. That is the way church should be. When you begin to have this, this, crisis begin to come to the ministry. Church is not a property. 
it is property of God. There are many faces here I'm seeing for a long time, I'm seeing them, and sometimes I'll see them, see them, see them. But be sure you maintain your faith and your belief. That is God for you. Church is a place of where you come and humble yourself. Because why should you humble yourself? Because it has no respect of anyone. Your wealth, your property, your, your appearance, your whatever does not mean anything to God. So when you sit there, it will humble you. And when you sit there, you look at somebody who sits beside you at your bar, maybe a clerk in your office, or a servant, or a cleaner, a gardener, sitting the same side by side with you, without separation, no special seat for anyone. That is church. On the last day, we leave it for God to separate us. Those who will sit in a big chair will sit there. Small chair will sit down there. That is God. God will do the job. Church is a place where you see the chairman of company clean the church. Why his worker also clean the same church? They are in the same department in the church. But after church, there may be a different department outside. But inside the church, the millionaire and poor man, they work together in the same department in the church. That is church. If we are not humble in the church, where can we humble them? Where? To? No way! If you come to church and we say this is the department of the chairman of the company, millionaire, this is where they sit and poor sit there. Outside there, the same thing happens. Inside the church, the same thing happens. Me? Where are we going? So this is the problem the world faces generally today. The world are upside down. War at large upside down. Because people that are supposed to humble themselves when they come to shore, we assert them in the church. We are asserting them in the church. So that does not allow, do not allow them to know that God is alive. So I want you to release me. Let me go to emergency. I'll come back. So after emergency, let me first go and attend to the sick one at emergency. After that, we come back. So when I come back, I, I believe God for many things we do here today. Thank you.